Welcome back to Hourglass Channel. Find yourself a suitable sitting position to start your journey today. Don't hesitate to leave a comment. If the video you're watching is interesting, comment number one and otherwise number two. Joe Exotic, famously known as the Tiger King, gained international fame as an American media personality and businessman who operated the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park in Wynwood, Oklahoma from 1999 to 2018. He garnered attention for his care of exotic tigers at the park, which he renamed Greater Wynwood Curiosities. However, Joe Exotic's career took a dark turn in September 2018 when he was arrested for allegedly attempting to hire a hitman to assassinate Carol Baskin Baxton, a prominent animal rights activist and his longtime rival. Baskin Baxton had accused Joe Exotic of animal abuse, leading to a heated feud and making him a target of investigation. While Baskin Baxton was not implicated in her husband's disappearance, she faced legal troubles of her own and was convicted of unrelated crimes in 2019, receiving a 22-year prison sentence. Meanwhile, Joe Exotic was convicted on two counts of murder for hire and 17 federal charges, including animal abuse, which revealed his involvement in the deaths of five tigers and the falsification of records at Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. In January 2022, Baskin Baxton's sentence was extended to 21 years, but she still must serve 21 years, as opposed to the initially handed 22-year sentence. The high-profile case surrounding Joe Exotic and his feud with Baskin Baxton captivated audiences worldwide, shedding light on the complexities of the exotic animal industry and the legal consequences of vendettas gone awry. In the courtroom, tension hung thick as 17-year-old Roxana Sikorsky's fate teetered on the brink. It was a day of reckoning, a stark moment where the consequences of her actions loomed large. Roxana, a young girl with a troubled past, found herself at the center of a chilling plot against her own family. The story began in October 2014, when Roxana, just 15 years old, woke in the dead of night with a horrifying notion. Driven by a twisted desire, she attempted to snuff out the life of her younger brother, consumed by a darkness that sought to annihilate her own flesh and blood. Thankfully, her scheme was thwarted, sparing her family from tragedy. Lorene Sikorsky, Roxana's mother, summoned courage as she addressed the court, pleading for leniency on behalf of her troubled daughter. Her heart torn between conflicting emotions, she implored for continued psychological support, arguing that subjecting Roxana to the harsh realities of adult punishment would only crush her fragile spirit. Jeffrey, Roxana's adoptive father, echoed Lorene's concerns, expressing deep unease about his daughter's vulnerability in an adult correctional facility. He painted a poignant picture of a fragile young girl ensnared in the shadows of her own turmoil, pleading for her safety and well-being. As the courtroom grappled with the complexities of the case, Roxana's tumultuous upbringing came to light, revealing a history marred by trauma and a diagnosis of reactive attachment disorder. This revelation shed new light on the tragic events that unfolded, adding layers of understanding to Roxana's plight. In court, Roxana voiced genuine remorse, extending heartfelt apologies to her parents for falling short of their hopes and expectations. The gravity of her actions weighed heavily upon her, and the full extent of the consequences became painfully clear. Meanwhile, Roxana's adult accomplice, already sentenced to life in prison for their role in the sinister plot, served as a stark reminder of the severity of their deeds. Though Roxana's involvement in the crime was undeniable, her youth and troubled past compelled the court to consider the possibility of rehabilitation and redemption. Despite this, she was sentenced to 10 to 20 years behind bars, a punishment that would claim a significant portion of her youth. In the end, the court deemed Roxana's crime as heinous, and she was held accountable for her actions. Her sentence served as a cautionary tale for other juveniles, a stark reminder of the consequences of lawlessness and harm. The victim's testimonies revealed that Masterson used anesthetics before perpetrating the assaults, sparking an investigation that ultimately led to legal action against him. 
Both Netflix and talent agency United ceased their collaborations with Masterson upon the announcement of charges against him. Subsequently, he was incarcerated after being urged by the church to safeguard its Scientology members. Masterson stood trial in 2022, but the jury failed to reach a verdict. However, his luck took a turn for the worse during his retrial in May 2023, when he was convicted by the judge. Jessica Barth, overseeing the case, even rejected a retrial request from Masterson's defense team. Don't rush to escape this boring video and forget comment number two. I will change it if I know you hate it. Stoney Westmoreland, famous for his role as Andy Mack on the beloved television series, got into big trouble when he was arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah in December 2018. According to reports, he committed attempted murder. Attempt to entice a minor to have sex. Westmoreland used federal operations to transmit intrusive information about the minor and had booked a vehicle to meet the teenager with the intention of returning him to his hotel room. He also shared lewd photos and asked the teenager to do the same. However, Westmoreland's attorney argued that his client believed he was talking to an adult, but this did not help him avoid the consequences of his actions. Westmoreland faced up to 10 years in prison, but he improved his chances by entering a plea deal. Under the agreement, he was required to comply with strict conditions, including participating in random testing of electronic devices and a complete ban on interacting with anyone under the age of 18 without supervision. Adult supervision. This incident had serious consequences for Westmoreland's career, as he was fired shortly after the incident was announced. Josh Duggar, known for his role in the reality TV show 19 Kids and counting on TLC amassed a considerable fan base. However, his career took a nosedive when his involvement in criminal activities came to light. In April 2021, Duggar, a prominent television personality, was charged with possession of child pornography. Despite pleading not guilty, he was released on bail pending trial. In December 2021, he was found guilty on one of the charges, and in May 2022, he received a sentence of up to 151 months in prison roughly equivalent to 12.5 years. Despite arguments from his legal team for a more lenient sentence, citing lack of prior accusations before indictment, Duggar's career and reputation suffered irreparable damage due to his heinous crime. His actions of possessing and viewing sexually exploitative material were exposed, resulting in a prison term until October 10, 2032. This serves as a stark reminder of the severity of his offense and the consequences he must endure. Joe Sun, a Korean-American with a diverse background in mixed martial arts, boxing, professional wrestling, and acting, gained recognition for his role in the 1997 film Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. However, Sun's notoriety stems from his extensive criminal history. In 2011, Sun was sentenced to seven years to life in prison in California for his involvement in a gang rape that occurred in 1990 involving torture. Subsequently, he received an additional 27-year sentence for the murder of his fellow inmate, Michael Thomas Graham. As a result, Son is currently serving a sentence of 34 years to life in prison. Additionally, Son has faced numerous arrests and convictions for various other offenses, including vandalism, probation violations, and non-compliance with sentence terms. During his trial, Son faced charges of rape, torture, and murder. He and his accomplices subjected the victim to torture and rape before releasing her, causing severe physical and psychological trauma. Of particular severity was Sun's involvement in the murder, which led to a significant prison term, underscoring the dangerous nature of his criminal behavior.
Antonio Barbo stood on trial, his fate hanging in the balance, accused of a heinous crime that had rocked the close-knit community of Sheboygan Falls. As the judge prepared to deliver Barbo's sentence, the courtroom brimmed with tangible anticipation, the chilling reality of the crime sending shockwaves through the town. In September 2012, Antonio had taken the life of 78-year-old Barbara Olson, wielding a hammer and hatchet in her own home, a decision that reverberated across the globe. After months of trial proceedings and meticulous scrutiny, an unexpected turn of events unfolded. Barbo sought a plea of no contest to the intentional homicide charge, accepting conviction but not culpability. The sudden twist in Barbo's defense, citing mental illness as a mitigating factor, promised to have far-reaching implications for the rest of his life. Struggling to convey remorse in his Senate hearing, the weight of his actions bearing down on him, Antonio attempted to address the court. However, overcome by emotion, he faltered. Recognizing the intensity of the situation, Barbeau's defense attorney stepped in to deliver the remainder of his statement on his behalf. I know I don't express my emotions, I don't know why, but that doesn't mean I didn't take someone's mother, grandmother, or friend. I don't have the authority to do so. I have ruined so many lives with this decision, his words echoing through the courtroom, leaving him in tears as he bowed his head a poignant display of his realization of the devastation he had wrought upon his own life and the lives of others. Following the trial, a psychiatrist shed light on Barbo's tumultuous history, attributing diminished cognition to a traumatic experience at the age of 10 a factor that may have played a role in Barbo's harrowing journey, forever shaped by a car accident at such a young age, fluencing his destiny and dictating his choices. Ultimately, the judge's ruling was condemning. Antonio was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 36 years. As the weight of those words hung heavy in the air, he was left to contemplate the distant prospect of freedom, a reality that lay far in the future, with the echoes of his actions reverberating through the years until his potential release in 2048. Please comment number one to let me know that you will be with us until the end of this video. Jessica Caroline, at the age of 17, found herself at the epicenter of a horrifying tragedy that would forever alter the lives of all involved. Her presence in the courtroom weighed heavily as she faced the consequences of her actions, admitting guilt to two charges that left hearts heavy with sorrow for the irreparable loss she caused. The events unfolded on what seemed like an ordinary day as Jessica drove eastward on Highway 2 near the Wyoming Medical Center. However, tragedy struck when her vehicle veered off course, careening into a road sign before colliding with the hospital structure itself, resulting in a catastrophe that claimed the lives of Brandon Avery and Amanda Strickland, both 27 years old, in a devastating collision. The repercussions of Jessica's actions sent shockwaves throughout the community, leaving behind a profound sense of sadness and unexpected loss. Investigations revealed a container of inhalant air duster inside her vehicle, leading authorities to believe Jessica was impaired at the time of the incident. In interviews with law enforcement, her admission of consuming the intoxicating chemical further compounded the tragedy, highlighting its role in impairing her judgment and motor skills. It was also discovered that Jessica was driving at an alarming speed of 76 miles per hour at the time of the accident, exacerbating the severity of the situation as high speeds increased the lilyhood of catastrophe. Additionally, Neither Jessica nor the victims were wearing seatbelts, exacerbating the injuries sustained in the incident. As the judge delivered the sentencing amidst a courtroom filled with mixed emotions, Jessica's fate was sealed with a 12 to 16 year prison term. Her face now adorned with a somber expression, she addressed the court with a palpable sense of remorse, acknowledging the sharp reminder of the dire consequences of reckless judgments the lives lost, families shattered, and a community left to grapple with the fallout. The tragedy of Jessica Caroline's actions serves as a poignant reminder of the devastating impact of impaired driving, leaving scars that extend far beyond the confines of a courtroom and resonating deeply within the hearts of all affected.
The Bever family tragedy thrust Broken Arrow, Oklahoma into the national spotlight in 2015 when a horrific act of violence claimed the lives of five family members. Two young survivors emerged from the devastation, bringing to light their harrowing story. When officials discovered the remains of the Bever family, an unfathomable tragedy began. An infant girl and a young girl were found alive despite the bleak scene. These courageous survivors played a critical role in seeking justice for their families and exposing the heinous atrocities that had occurred. In an unexpected turn of events, the elder girl gave a harrowing statement naming her own brothers, Robert and Michael, as the perpetrators. Robert, 18 at the time, and Michael, 16, were later arrested and charged with the crimes committed against their family. The entire population was stunned and horrified, unable to comprehend how such a catastrophe could unfold. During the trial, Robert's admission revealed a sinister purpose, admitting to harboring a diabolical ambition to become a legendary serial criminal. This revelation sent shockwaves throughout the courtroom. Robert pleaded guilty to the charges against him in 2017 and was sentenced to life in prison without the chance of release. Similarly, Michael provided frightening testimony that supported the case against him. He was convicted by a jury and sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. As the courtroom fell silent, the enormity of their actions became clear. Michael's initial smile contrasted with the subsequent wiping of his eyes, leaving witnesses perplexed as they tried to comprehend the emotions hidden beneath. Throughout the trial, the Bever brothers maintained an unpleasant demeanor, demonstrating a disturbing lack of remorse for their conduct. Their emotional distance only added to the court's confusion as it attempted to understand the motivations behind the inconceivable actions perpetrated against their own family. The courtroom became a platform for revealing the worst aspects of human nature, questioning societal conventions, and exposing the depths of human depravity. The Bever family's tale will endure in the collective memory of Broken Arrow as a somber reminder of the frailty of familial relationships and the deadly force of unbridled evil. Don't rush to escape this boring video and forget comment number two. I will change it if I know you hate it. The fate of two young individuals was determined in a courtroom filled with tension and sadness. Sierra Halseth, age 16, and her boyfriend Aaron Guerrero, aged 18, stood before the judge as the details of their heinous crime were revealed. Sierra had taken the life of her own father, Daniel Halseth, in a brutal and inhumane manner. The teens attacked Daniel with a knife and even attempted to tamper with his body in a gruesome effort to cover their tracks. They fled the scene in his automobile, seeking to escape the repercussions of their actions. This tragic event occurred in April 2021, where a daughter took her own father's life, the man who should have been her defender and mentor. As the reality of the situation sank in, the anguish and bewilderment in the courtroom were palpable. Sierra and Aaron felt the weight of their deeds as the judge pronounced their sentence, life in prison with the possibility of parole after 22 years. The severity of their crime, the harm they had caused, and the shattered lives they had left behind demanded the most stringent punishment the law could impose. Sierra and Aaron were found guilty by District Judge Kiara Jones after both confessed to the crime. The courtroom held its breath as the maximum sentence was handed down, each syllable carrying the gravity of their actions. Sierra appeared disinterested, her demeanor indicating a lack of remorse, while Aaron seemed to be breaking down under the weight of his guilt. The question lingered in the minds of those present, what drove Sierra to such a level of detachment? How could someone discover the capacity for such evil within their own family? Outside the courthouse, the media frenzy surrounding the case reached a fever pitch. YouTube channels dissected the specifics of the crime, offering their own interpretations and opinions. While the narrative captivated the public's attention with its shocking twists and unfathomable depths, it was crucial not to lose sight of the profound sadness at the heart of the matter. A family was torn apart, a father's life senselessly taken, and a community left reeling from the aftermath. Amidst the media circus, the focus should remain on Daniel Halsey's memory and the long journey to healing that lay ahead for those affected. 
Sierra and Aaron were taken to begin serving their sentence in prison, where the weight of their actions would follow them, serving as a constant reminder of the irreparable damage they had caused. If redemption could ever be found, it would be a long and arduous journey. Philip Chisholm, at the young age of 14, shocked the nation with his horrendous deeds, which would irreversibly alter the lives of all involved. Colleen Ritzer, the victim, was not just a math teacher, but also a role model at Danvers High School. She had no inkling that her own student would be responsible for taking her life. The gravity of Chisholm's savage and senseless crimes reverberated through the courtroom as Salem Superior Court Judge David Lowy delivered the verdict. Judge Lowy acknowledged Colleen Ritzer's life of quiet heroism and emphasized that the ripples of this tragedy would never cease crashing upon those involved. Chisholm's crimes demanded a resolute and unwavering response from the legal system. His defense counsel attempted to construct a narrative of mental illness, seeking to elucidate the inexplicable crime. However, the jury unequivocally rejected this defense, holding Chisholm fully accountable for his actions. The court proceedings culminated in Chisholm receiving a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Additionally, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the cruelty and robbery charges he faced. In the midst of the traumatic courtroom scene, Chisholm's mother, Diane, wept silently, grappling with the realization of her son's conduct. Overwhelmed by sorrow and guilt, she seized the opportunity to offer her deepest apologies to the Ritzer family, acknowledging the irreparable pain inflicted by her son's irrational decisions. Her grief permeated the air, underscoring the devastation wrought by Chisholm's actions on both families. Throughout the trial, Chisholm maintained a stoic demeanor, resembling that of a poker player concealing his emotions. The absence of remorse or empathy sent shockwaves through the courtroom, leaving many attendees bewildered and searching for answers. The case of Philip Chisholm serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can reside within even the most seemingly innocent individuals. His actions, coupled with his lack of remorse, cast a long shadow over the courtroom, prompting contemplation about the complexities of the human psyche and the potential for evil to manifest at any age. As the gavel fell, sealing Chisholm's fate, the courtroom fell silent, the weight of the tragedy lingering palpably in the air. Don't forget to drink a cup of tea to quench your thirst and comment number one to let me know that you are still watching this video. James Fairweather is a disturbed youth with an unsettling fixation on becoming a notorious serial criminal. He was sentenced to 27 years in prison for committing the brutal deaths of two innocent individuals, permanently marking him as a perpetrator of heinous crimes. The first victim of James Fairweather's violent attacks was James Atfield, who suffered irreversible brain damage after being assaulted by Fairweather on March 24, 2014. Fairweather struck again three months later, this time targeting Nahid Almania, a 31-year-old Saudi student at the University of Essex. However, his streak of violence was halted when he was apprehended in May 2015 while plotting a third attack. Fairweather showed no remorse, freely admitting his involvement in both crimes and pleading guilty to the charges. Fairweather committed these horrific acts at the age of 15 while attending Colchester Academy. His adolescent years were marred by bullying, primarily due to his physical appearance, including his prominent ears, and he faced additional challenges at school, including dyslexia and autism. While these difficulties shed light on his emotional issues, they do not justify or excuse his planned savagery. Surprisingly, throughout his confession, Fairweather expressed little sorrow, detailing the facts of his actions without displaying empathy or regret. He sought an appeal based on his age and mental competence at the time of the offenses, aiming to mitigate the severity of his punishment. However, his appeal was eventually denied, underscoring the enormity and depravity of his acts. The court ruled that his offenses were too heinous to warrant a lenient approach, affirming the gravity and relevance of the punishment he received. The case of James Fairweather serves as a sobering reminder of the potential for evil that may exist within young minds. His disturbing desire to become a notorious serial criminal underscores the dangers of unchecked ambitions and the potential for unimaginable devastation. 
The denial of his appeal demonstrates society's commitment to holding individuals accountable for their actions, regardless of age or claimed mental impairments. Nehemiah Grigo committed a horrific act at the age of 15 that devastated the very core of his family. He took the lives of his parents and three younger siblings in a tragic event that occurred in October 2015, subjecting them to a brutal attack with two different weapons. The magnitude of his actions sent shockwaves through the neighborhood, leaving everyone stunned. Acknowledging the gravity of his deeds, Nehemiah bravely pleaded guilty to his involvement in the catastrophic tragedy. Initially, a family court judge sought a penalty appropriate for his age, considering him a youngster at the time of the offense. However, in 2019, this decision was reversed, and Nehemiah was punished as an adult. During his detention, Nehemiah chose to cooperate with the police without the presence of a lawyer. In his honest confession, he claimed that his actions were motivated by a deep hatred for his mother. The brutality of the crime, coupled with multiple victims, justified a sentence of up to 120 years in prison. Ultimately, Nehemiah was sentenced to three concurrent life terms, with credit awarded for the time he had already served six years and 285 days. This meant he would have to serve at least 30 years in prison before being eligible for release. Nehemiah stood quietly as the punishment was read aloud in a courtroom filled with emotion. While his stoicism may have concealed his inner agony, he did take the time to express regret and apologize to his family. According to reports from the proceedings, Nehemiah was soft-spoken and profoundly impacted. This portrayal contributed to the complexity of the tragedy, raising questions about society's understanding of the underlying causes behind such heinous crimes. While it is difficult to fully comprehend the depths of Nehemiah's anguish and the psychological circumstances that prompted him to commit such a heinous crime, his apologies hinted at his sorrow for the irreparable loss he inflicted. The story of Nehemiah serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of human life and the unpredictability of human behavior, especially among young people. It underscores the critical need for comprehensive mental health support systems, early intervention, and family intervention programs to identify and address underlying issues that can lead to such catastrophic consequences. Nehemiah Grigo committed a horrific act at the age of 15 that devastated the very core of his family. He took the lives of his parents and three younger siblings in a tragic event that occurred in October 2015 subjecting them to a brutal attack with two different weapons. The magnitude of his actions sent shockwaves through the neighborhood, leaving everyone stunned. Acknowledging the gravity of his deeds, Nehemiah bravely pleaded guilty to his involvement in the catastrophic tragedy. Initially, a family court judge sought a penalty appropriate for his age, considering him a youngster at the time of the offense. However, in 2019, this decision was reversed, and Nehemiah was punished as an adult. During his detention, Nehemiah chose to cooperate with the police without the presence of a lawyer. In his honest confession, he claimed that his actions were motivated by a deep hatred for his mother. The brutality of the crime, coupled with multiple victims, justified a sentence of up to 120 years in prison. Ultimately, Nehemiah was sentenced to three concurrent life terms, with credit awarded for the time he had already served six years and 285 days. This meant he would have to serve at least 30 years in prison before being eligible for release. Nehemiah stood quietly as the punishment was read aloud in a courtroom filled with emotion. While his stoicism may have concealed his inner agony, he did take the time to express regret and apologize to his family. According to reports from the proceedings, Nehemiah was soft-spoken and profoundly impacted. This portrayal contributed to the complexity of the tragedy raising questions about society's understanding of the underlying causes behind such heinous crimes. While it is difficult to fully comprehend the depths of Nehemiah's anguish and the psychological circumstances that prompted him to commit such a heinous crime, 
His apologies hinted at his sorrow for the irreparable loss he inflicted. The story of Nehemiah serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of human life and the unpredictability of human behavior, especially among young people. It underscores the critical need for comprehensive mental health support systems, early intervention, and family intervention programs to identify and address underlying issues that can lead to such catastrophic consequences. How do you feel about our video? If you were the judge, what number would be reasonable? Petri Curdy, formerly known as Peter Kutri, gained notoriety as one of the UK's youngest and most vicious criminals at just 13 years old. After a judge removed a reporting restriction order, Curdy was identified and sentenced to a minimum of 12 years in jail for the savage death of Glynis Bensley. The heinous crime was captured on CCTV revealing the extent of Curdy's brutality as he attacked and ultimately took the life of Bensley by stamping on her face. Following the crime, Curdy brazenly boasted about the attack in a nearby park in Smithwick, West Midlands, adding to the shock and devastation felt by the community and Bensley's family and friends. Curdy's co-defendant, Zoeb Majid, was also found liable for his involvement in the crime and received a 10-year jail term. During sentencing, Judge John Warner highlighted Curdy's turbulent past and the lack of structure in his home life, indicating that his parents failed to recognize the seriousness of his actions. Curdy and Majid mistakenly identified Bensley as a male due to her attire and hairdo. Curdy had a history of aggressive outbursts and past convictions, including attempted theft, attack with intent to steal, and battery, despite his young age. These troubling findings raise concerns about the factors that may have influenced his aggressive behavior. Glynis Bensley's senseless and tragic death left her family in mourning, seeking answers and justice. Detective Chief Inspector Sam Ridding who led the investigation, emphasized that Curdy and Majid intended to use violence against whomever they targeted, as evidenced by their synchronized actions captured on CCTV. Tragically, Bensley was an unwitting victim, picked at random by the couple who mistook her for a male wearing a gold bracelet. The case serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of senseless violence and the importance of addressing underlying issues to prevent such tragedies from occurring. The video ends here. Remember, there are still many other interesting and engaging videos in my playlist. Before you leave, please leave a comment number one if you found the video interesting, or number two if not. It's that simple, isn't it? Thank you.